What's up guys, if you've been following my social media lately, you would have seen that I went to Costa Rica with the Canadian national futsal team. In this video, I want to tell you about that experience and some valuable lessons that you can take from it. So you're probably wondering, how did I get on the team? Well, honestly, it was very random. I got an email invitation to come to a tryout. The coach was going all over the country doing identification tryouts in different areas. And because I was probably one of the, identified as one of the best players in the futsal league, I got an invitation to this tryout. I went to the tryout, I did fairly well. The coach thought I was good enough. He thought I was one of the best players there. Uh, we talked briefly after the trial, but he gave me no indication that he was going to give me a call. But a few months later, I got a call. He said, hey, can you come to Costa Rica with the Canadian national futsal team? So it was totally random, very drastic as far as one day I'm at this trial, the next day I'm getting a call and I'm going on a plane, paid trip, going to Costa Rica, playing against Costa Rica, one of the best teams in CONCACAF for futsal. So it was very crazy, very random, as I said. But the lesson I want you to take from that is you always have to be at your best because you never know what opportunity is going to pop up. But if you're always waiting for an opportunity to arise that will force you to, okay, now I have to start training. Now I have to get at my best because this opportunity is here. It might be too late. So I want you to always think, be honest with yourself. Every time I play, I want to be at my best. I have to be at my best because you never know who's watching. You never know which opportunity could appear and present itself to you. So whether you're playing with your friends in the park, you're practicing with your team, you have a game, you have a tournament, you have a trial, you have to make sure that you show up in the best form of your life. Number one, football is just more fun when you're at your best. When you are confident, when you're in the best form that you've ever been, you will have more fun on the field, but you will perform better. And these opportunities will start popping up. Getting on the Canadian national team was never a goal of mine. I thought that was something that was gone and it just wasn't a possibility at the age that I was at. But because I was in great form, I was striving to become better every day, even though I didn't have these big, big goals, I just had little goals. I wanna win this tournament. I wanna be the best player in this league. I wanna score the most amount of goals. Okay, because I had all these little goals and I was striving to become better every day, this opportunity came and I was ready. So number one, make sure that you are always at your best. Be honest with yourself. Were you better last month? Because you shouldn't be. If you're the type of player who's serious about becoming the best you could possibly be, every day you should get better in some way. The second lesson I want you to take from my experience is if an opportunity presents itself and you don't think it might be the best thing for you or you kind of doubt your ability to succeed in that moment, just do it anyway. Worst case, you don't make it, but you get some experience from it. Okay, so honestly, when I went to the trial, I wasn't expecting to get on the team. I thought there would be maybe better players in there. I thought the quality of players across the country would be too high for my level, but I still wanted to test myself. I still wanted to put myself in that experience and honestly, I wanted to get beaten down. I was hoping that the quality of players would be better. Not saying that I was the best, but I was hoping that that experience would really wake me up and say, wow, you have a lot to improve upon. So if an opportunity presents itself, let's say for example, you get a trial with a team or there's an open trial and you don't feel that you're good enough to make it, go anyway. If you get cut, that's part of the experience. Getting cut will teach you something, okay? Going to that opportunity, whether that's a trial, you're playing with a new team, you were playing in a big game, you're playing with bigger players, more experienced players. Okay, put yourself in that situation where you are forced to doubt yourself. Why? It's gonna make you a better player at the end of the day. If you're always hiding from those experiences, hiding from situations that put you outside of your comfort zone, 
you will never improve as a player. It's easy to play with the players that you've always played with, the quality of players that you've always played with, on the same team where you're the best player. It's easy to do that. But if you want to achieve more in the long run, you want to become better, then you have to push yourself into these situations where you feel like, hey, I might be the worst player here. And that is a good thing. That is going to force me to analyze my game, to improve in different ways. It's going to motivate me because I know that level is there. I know I can get to that level, but I have to challenge myself. So if opportunities come up in your life, like I said, this was never a goal of mine. And even going to the tryout, I said, you know what? If if, I, if something comes out of this, great. If nothing comes out of this, that's fine as well. I'll become a better player because of it. I'll get some more experience. I'll become smarter. And in the end, it will benefit. So if opportunities come up and you're doubting yourself, you feel like you're not good enough, go anyway. Put yourself in that situation anyway. You will become a better player because of it. After I got the call and I knew I was going to Costa Rica with the Canadian national team, I started, obviously started training, getting myself in a good condition, but just watching uh, professional football, especially watching the Costa Rican national team, because I knew I was going to play against these guys. So I started watching and I said, wow, these guys are really good. And anytime you're in a new situation, you start to doubt yourself. You say, hey, am I good enough? Are these guys going to be too much for me? Is it going to be too fast? Are they going to be too strong, too skilled? Am I going to get humiliated? All these thoughts will pop up in your head. That's normal. You have to learn to talk yourself through that. You say, I'm just going to do my best. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to make sure I'm as best prepared as I possibly can be. I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to be as focused as I can. I'm going to try to learn as much as I can. And you just have to talk yourself through that difficult and new situation. But the cool thing is, the crazy thing is that I was going in there thinking, wow, these guys are really, really good. But when we played the two matches, yes, we lost both matches, um, but CONCACAF, CONCACAF, in CONCACAF, I think Costa Rica's ranked number one, and Canada's probably, I don't know the rankings, but Canada's way down, probably like 50th or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but there's a big gap in the rankings, so no one expected us to win. Saying that, we, we competed. The first game was 5-4, we lost, and we could have won that game. But the point I want to get across is I was going in with this mentality that, wow, these guys are going to be so good. They're going to be way above our level. But the truth is, they weren't. Yes, they were better than us. Yes, they were better in every facet. Speed of play, organization, decision making, they were better. But the point I'm getting across here is the gap isn't that high. They play futsal every single day. If I played futsal every single day, perhaps I'd be at their level. If I played with in a competitive environment every day, perhaps I would be at their level. They train every day, five days a week, with the national team, with their professional futsal clubs. So the point I'm trying to get across here is, you think that professional players are way above your level, but in reality, if you're one of the best players in your city, the gap isn't that big. Yes, they are still better than you because they train in that specific demanding, challenging, high-class environment every single day. You don't, you train at an, an amateur environment. But if you can get yourself into that environment, then you can get to that level. So that's the point I want to get across. The gap isn't that big. Now, if you saw a video I posted a while ago, I said, because there's two different sides to this, this way of thinking. I said in that video, when you're young, you're naive. You think you're better than you are. I remember watching football on TV when I was 10 years old saying, oh, my skills is good as these guys. I'm as good as these guys. I can play at this league. When in reality, you're really not. You're 10 years old. You think you're better than you are, whatever. You're a teenager. But in all honesty, there's guys in your own city who are better than you. They're 20 years old and they could dominate you. Okay, but once you get to that age, you're getting to 18, 20 years old, you're one of the best players in your city. Believe me, the gap is not that big. Okay, so yes, they are better than you, but that's just because they're putting themselves in a situation that forces them to be sharper, to be faster, to be fitter, to be better in every single way. You have the potential to get to that level. You just have to get yourself in that environment. So I want you to understand that the gap is not that big. Believe in your ability. If you're one of the best players in your city, you are good enough to play at the top level. So as I said, I got that call, it was very random. It was very drastic from trial to now you're on the plane, we're going to Costa Rica. We got there and it was honestly like three days. Players all across the country never really played together. A couple of them have, but come together and now you're supposed to play against this national team in three days. So we train, basically trained two days. The third day was a bit of recovery stuff, just getting prepped for the game. We played a match at night. So in those, uh, in those 
two days, the training sessions. Honestly, to myself, I thought, wow, like you're right in here. I didn't know the quality of players that were gonna be there. As I said, I thought it was gonna be higher. I thought it was gonna be better. I was hoping that I'd be one of the worst players there. In the coach's eyes, I guess I was because I didn't play that much. In the matches, I only played about two minutes. But in my own mind, and I'm very self-aware, I'm very honest with myself. If someone's better than me, I'll admit that. There were players there who were better than me. There were young players. There was 18-year-olds there who were better than me. There was experienced players who were better than me. But on the average, I thought I was good enough to get more minutes. I only played a few minutes. I was definitely a bench player. And in all reality, there were a couple of key players who were missing from that team. They played a professional in the States in the major indoor leagues. So they weren't there at that time. That's about five players who were not there. So in reality, the goal is to get to the 2020 World Cup with the Canadian National Fut Football Team. I would not be on that team because I was a bench player. Okay, so, but to myself, I thought, you know what? I'm better than, I'm just as good as about 80% of these guys. Now, saying that, the coach thought otherwise because I didn't get the minutes. So I want you to understand that being good enough or knowing that you yourself were good enough feeling, hey, I am, I'm better than these guys. I'm just as good as these guys. It's not the same as proving yourself to the coach, okay? Because the coach has only seen you play a few times. You've seen yourself play your whole life. You know your form, you know your ability. But just because you're good enough doesn't mean that you proved yourself in that moment. So there's a big difference between good enough and performing. Being prepared and performing in the moment. Now honestly, I thought I performed well enough in the first two days to get myself into that lineup, into those first two, uh, the first eight players. So you would be rotating, you'd be playing most of the game. But the coach thought otherwise. Now, I'm not upset with that. I'm not um, resentful to the coach. There's no negative emotions here. This just tells me that I have to get better and I have to be able to prove myself. So I want you to know that just because you didn't prove yourself in one moment or you were not good enough in one moment, you were not properly prepared, you were not good enough as a player, that doesn't mean that you cannot become good enough in the future. And you have to have that mentality. Let's say you got cut from a team. Let's say you were a bench player. You're not getting the minutes. Okay, you can, you can accept that and say, this is my reality. This is who I am. I'll never be good enough. Or you can say, this is just part of the process. I needed to be on the bench. I needed to be cut from this team, so it would force me to be honest with myself and say, hey, what do I need to improve so I can get that goal that I want? Whether that's making the team, getting more minutes, becoming a professional, doing better in that situation that you failed in in the past. So understand that, number one, just because you think you're good enough, it doesn't mean that you've proven yourself to be good enough in that moment when it was necessary. And number two, just because you're not good enough today does not mean that you cannot become good enough tomorrow. So I just wanted to share that experience with you guys. I hope you got some value from this video. So I just wanted to share this experience with you guys. I hope you got some value out of this video. My goal is the 2020 World Cup, Futsal World Cup. I want to try to get on that team. As I said, I'm not good enough right now, but I know that. I'm aware of myself. I'm aware of my weaknesses. I know what I have to improve upon, and I'm going to work to do that. I want you guys to keep me honest, keep me motivated, and let's keep pushing forward. Please subscribe if you haven't, for some strange reasons. Subscribe so you get all the videos. Hit that notification button. Comment below if you got any feedback, if you want to support, if you want to hate, if you want to criticize. It all helps me improve. Make sure that you like, give me a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you real soon.